In today's episode of Golden Nuggets Season 2 with Sylvia Eldawi, we are trading places. Sylvia, how are we trading places? How am I sat here? And how has this even happened? Well, it's a tell-all. So it's tradition that I'm the one doing the answering. But I do think that we're going to end up having some some bants about season two. But you also made a little promise in season one as well. Is that I right? I did. I did. I pinky promised that you will come back in season two. So, so. here I am. <laughs> Okay, let's get let's get uh, straight into it. Let's get the show on the road. Let's get the show on the road, as they say. Epis- oh, hold on. Let me just put this away, first of all. Oh, <laughs> a little plug in- here. Very interesting. <laughs> what do we have here? We've got the International Property and Travel magazine that's available on first and business class Emirates flights and Absolutely. lounges only. Oh, and who happens to be on page 10? <laughs> Let's just have a look, shall we? Ainsley. Thank you, thank you so much. This is my head of marketing. <laughs> I'm not the marketing guy. <laughs> right, that's a little in-joke and we'll get to that, the little in-joke. Okay, well, let's let's start straight away. Um, I'm Eamon, uh, episode nine from Override. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that episode. <laughs> right. Tell, tell us how that went and some of your takeaways uh, from Eamon. So that was the AI episode where we were going to talk about artificial intelligence. Well, we did speak about artificial intelligence. We gave a little top 10 countdown of the must-have AI apps. And we had a little debate over what's what, chat GPT, this and that. And um, tried to get the sneak peek on Eamon's new product, but he wasn't having any of it. He, he wasn't giving any of that away, <laughs> he was he? But in fairness, he wasn't the marketing guy. He <laughs> wasn't the marketing guy. I'm, I'm not the marketing guy. Hey, I'm just the founder. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I was trying to get the scoop, but he weren't having any of it. Uh, episode 10, Happy Tenant. Uh, yes. There was quite a bit about property management that was discussed. Yeah. Uh, there was a few things in there that was a little bit controversial as it mm-hmm. was. Do you want to spill the tea? So that episode was... Basically, why property management is the future. All about client retention, um, storytelling. What else did Joe talk about? Don't just take your check, commission check and run. Like you've got to nurture these clients and you can do that by offering property management services plus plus other services that people, your clients will need from you. So um, I think there's quite a bit of that in the industry, isn't there? Yeah, hit and run Hit and run, the guys, I think there's two types of agents. There's the career agent. And then there's kind of like the agent, there's the kind of the hit and run Mm. type. So I think it's important when people are trying to select and find a good agent to work with, they can find someone that can actually, you know. That's going to stick around. Stick around and do a job and go that little bit extra Mm. as well. So I think that's really important. And the other thing that he was, was, he's a big storyteller. He was a big storyteller. (laughs) He like, he's like, agent, stop selling on, um, you know, oh. Burj Khalifa view, like, ah, oh, it's Is that not, the one where he spoke a little bit about um, the views? Uh, yes, yeah, so Burj Khalifa view, uh, uh, the swimming the pool. The swimming pool with the horses That's that right, were going yeah. in the morning. <laughs> I actually quite like that. So it's like, you've got to ask your seller or landlord to tell you the story. Yeah. And I'm sure you do the same. You go, when you're, you're taking on a listing, you've got to ask, what, you know, tell us some stories about this property more beyond square foot, beyond yeah. views, beyond how far it is to the nearest yeah. amenities. So, it, so in yeah. fact, when I, I think you're right. In fact, one of the things I enjoy the most when mm. I actually take on a new listing is spending time with the owner yeah. to understand about the property mm. because some of the nuances and some of the things that they you just know, won't know. The, there's no way, yeah. you know, there's no way to really yeah. know, especially in a short period of time. And mm. they know where the sun sets, they know where the sun yes, rises. That's an important thing. You know, one. things like that mm. that you wouldn't necessarily know. Uh, and and you know, swimming horses. And, sw- and, and the horses that go swimming in the morning <laughs> in, in the swimming pool down below, which you yeah. can watch as yeah. you're having your morning coffee. Exactly. So, um, yeah, that was really, really interesting. I enjoyed that as well. Mm. He was uh, he was a great storyteller. That was teller, a good show. Uh, to be fair. Uh, episode 11, I believe that was Waleed from Keeper. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that I think came out of that one was the one of the dirtiest words that I will call it mm-hmm. in real estate. You're going to call it. I believe you called it um, top ups. Top up. In season one, the dirtiest word for season one was top up. Yeah. You're going to tell us what your... You can have the dirtiest word. My for dirtiest word two. is definitely in real estate is definitely cold calling. Yeah. I hate it when I get it. I hate it when I receive. I'm not sure if there's anybody that actually yeah. enjoys receiving four, five, six calls a day yeah. uh, from cold calling. So that's something well, that I really don't like. That's it. Well, he said it's harassment. Yeah. He, he called he, it harassment. Yeah, he was really upset by <laughs> that, wasn't he? <laughs> he really was really upset. He was not happy. Yeah. Um, that's something I wish that the industry could mm. kind of pivot 
uh, and, and move away from the cold yeah. calling and find ulterior ways uh, to... Yeah, to, like, to, to getting like, like getting yourself in a magazine. Like getting yourself an Emirates <laughs> first and business class. But that's what it is. It's about be, knowing or identifying where your potential clients are. Yeah. Where do they hang out? Yeah. Where do they... What are they experiencing? What restaurants do they go to? What, and targeting them. And targeting When that, they're at those locations, yes. when they're at those places, in yeah. a non-intrusive way. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's something. I um, think there's only one benefit of cold calling... And that is if you do, like, let's say, for example, someone cold calls you yep. and they're half decent. Yeah, you might, I love it. You might want to hire them. Yeah. So agency CEOs yeah. may entertain. Yeah. Cold calling. Cold calling. Just I have as to be a, honest, like a, I have to caveat yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, so clearly I don't like a bad cold call. Yeah. But if I get a good cold call that mm. someone's experienced, they know what they're talking about yeah. uh, and they're, they're, they're really switched on, I mm. do enjoy it. I do entertain yeah. it and, and that, that works well. And so. I did see, I saw a really good... Um, post on Instagram yesterday and it was this guy saying never I mean we're not giving tips for cold calling here don't get me wrong yeah. but never ever call someone and say is that a Ainsley is that you or is that Mr Ainsley yeah. never say never have any doubt As about who, who you're, you're calling, calling yeah because if you're if I say hi Ainsley it's Sylvia yes and you're not Ainsley you're gonna tell me no you've got the wrong Correct. number but Correct. me asking you Hi, is that Ainsley? Already, you're like, who the hell is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, if, if, if you're going to yeah. do it, be prepared. Mm. Yeah. Know what you need to do. Yeah. Understand what you're calling about yeah. and have all the information there. And don't ask if it's the right time. And but we're not condoning cold calling. No, no. <laughs> that is definitely the dirtiest word. There's, yeah. no, there's no question about that. Yeah. Um, who do we... Uh, Think Prop was episode 12, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, Yulia Nekov Nekovnian. That was I still got it wrong. About yeah. women in real estate. A little bit. We touched on women in real estate. Um, she also mentioned Jordan Belford as well. Is that she right? Did. So she did. Uh, yeah, she did. Um, she went, she put herself through. Uh, well, she couldn't find any regional trainers or uh -huh. sales trainers. So she had to look to the US. So she did Jordan Belfort University. I'm not sure who else she did. She did, did um, well, she, she said that she'd been on quite a few courses, yeah. actually, I believe. Yeah. Um, and then she was like, I can do this myself now. So she's um, become a, a sales trainer. and With um, some quite good clients, if I remember right. She had some Emirates good clients, Emirates MBD, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and she had some really good, actually, that was funny. We were talking about selling in chats. Yeah. Oh. So texting do's and don'ts, voice notes. Yes. Was that the emojis <laughs> to the shakes? Emojis to the shakes. <laughs> Would you send an emoji to a shake? Uh, well, I, 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 the way I look at it is a shake. A smiley face. A shake at the end of the day is still a human, right? Exactly. They still That's understand what she it. You said, can still yeah. be personable. You yeah. can still kind of. So, yeah. um, so I probably yeah may well send an emoji yeah. to a to a to a shake. So it's not a no no. What were the other no nos? Long voice notes. Uh -huh. This is one of your pet peeves, isn't yes. it? Yes, and I've got one of you actually. When you left me a voice note, it was so funny. You were like, "Hold on, I'm reaching my one minute. Goodbye." Yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Yeah, yeah. So nothing over a one minute voice note, um, and yeah, just not being dry over text. So she gave some really good tips on that. Having and a good rapport, yeah. Ha having the banter, building the relationships, yeah. And um, we started talking about sustainability, but we didn't go too deep into it. But again, be, going beyond selling on square foot, like, so it's not just enough, oh, we've got this view, this floor, this size, this price. Like, there's so much more to sell. Yeah. So find out what that is and use that to stand out from the competition, yeah. you know, your, your, your stories. Yeah. Um, and it's then, a competitive it's a competitive market out there no yeah. doubt there's, a, there's lots of brokers isn't there so yeah. you've you need... got to sound different yeah you've got to sound different and we gave a shout out to all the ladies in real estate the female leaders in yeah. real estate but we did miss a few i'm sorry oh now's your but now's <laughs> your chance now's your opportunity <laughs> no, but i tagged them in the oh you post. tagged them afterwards i you? tagged them in the post so now i'm gonna forget Mm -hmm. Oh, I think one of the things you also spoke about was leaders, like female leaders in real yes. estate. Because I think you mentioned the fact that there's not that many CEOs what was it? running it's, businesses. Um, there's sixty percent of real estate agents are female, but only two or three yeah. percent are in top leadership, which is really low. Which is really low. Yeah. Um. So we need to do something about that. Yeah. But, um, Ladies out there, yeah. CEOs, <laughs> you know, we, need, we need more female CEOs yeah. in the in the industry it, to be able to. We certainly do. Uh, push um, forward. Uh, do you want to give any shout outs to any women in? Uh, well, one of the people, I think it was actually season one, it was Caroline Tinkle was, yeah. was, was on, and she was from Bayou. Correct. That's Trading right. Academy, yeah, yeah. she's a trading academy and she's mm -hmm. really spearheading being able to put more into 
training and yeah. be able to get brokers to be significantly better and to, to move forward. She so is. so I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in education. Caroline. Uh, Caroline, there we go. <laughs> we she, salute you. We salute, we salute you for educating the next generation and yeah. being able to improve the current yeah. uh, generation. She's of really good. Well. She, was, she was good. Yeah. She was switched yeah. on. She was articulate, intelligent. I enjoyed that watching. That was episode five. Was that episode five? Season yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sustainability, you touched on that earlier. Yes. COP28 just happened. Uh, episode 13. Yeah. Why should sustainability matter to agents? So here's the thing. I've got to be honest with you. I timed that episode because COP28 was on our doorstep. Yeah. I didn't know much about it. Yeah. Um, and we, we had Dr. Dr. Waters the opportunity to interview him about um, real estate sustainability, why it should matter. It should matter because I think he said that, I can't remember correctly, but it was like 60% of emissions are coming from the real estate, the real estate industry. industry. I heard him say that. Um, so not that like a real estate agent has a responsibility to do anything about it. The responsibility is on governments, on developers, yeah. um, but the products that are coming out or the, the differences in communities are now starting to matter to end users. Yes. So again, going back to that theme about adding value or not just selling on square foot, selling on sustainability, why this community is recycling in this way or why they're saving energy by doing that or solar panel, this and that. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know what COP stood for. Do you know what COP stands for? Uh, I believe it stands for... Conference of Parties. That's exactly what it's going for. <laughs> so I didn't That's even exactly. know. And this is the 28th uh, the tw conference of yeah. parties that they've had. Yeah. Hence the, yeah, hence COP28. Yeah. But now we're shooting this after COP28 has concluded. And so basically what they, they don't wrap it up until they've all reached an agreement. Which is brilliant. And, but the agreement that they arrived at seems to not be, I mean, they arrived at an agreement to, transition away from fossil fuels yeah. not stop right or not kind of they agreed to move in the right direction yeah, it was towards like, the destination but, but not, not actually get there okay <laughs> you know okay or you know i don't know so but baby steps i mean you know steps. a lot of countries came a lot of the heads of state yeah. from around the world also oh we put on a show for uh, them we, didn't we the, 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 U, the uae <laughs> dubai was really flying the flag on that one wasn't it yeah it really uh but to be fair i mean apart from there was three days where they closed shehzide road for in the morning yeah but i didn't notice a marked difference in traffic or anything so it I'm, seems I'm like sure a... plenty of people did. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I'm probably not going at peak times yeah. down Shenzhen Road, but yeah, it seemed pretty. Um... It was good. I think it was mm. very, very successful. Mm. Uh, I think uh, many people from around. I actually was fortunate enough. I actually went up to. Oh, did you? I had a, I had a okay. friend that was over that was actually mm. speaking, uh, and uh, and people that I met and people that I spoke to down there, they yeah. really enjoyed it. Many yeah. people hadn't been to the UAE before. Yeah. Uh, from around the world, and they were quite surprised and shocked by you know how advanced things yeah. were here. Uh, so it's always good for people yeah. to see and understand. And also, when people come, if they like it, that also they come back and say it. That's how it starts. Not only it? that, more potential buyers. So, <laughs> so you're thinking of it that way. There's almost yeah. always uh, there's always way for more potential buyers yeah. in, the, in the UAE for uh, pre-release. And had you, had you come to Dubai on holiday before you moved here? I hadn't. Interestingly okay. enough, I watched the Discovery Channel oh, okay. uh, when they were actually building the Palm mm -hmm. many, many, many years ago mm. about them, you know, building construction. And I was fascinated by what they were doing. The fact that they didn't have enough coastline, mm. they wanted to get more coastline, but they knew that they're going to move away, pivot away from from oil and move yeah. more towards uh, tourism. tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, watched that documentary. I saw, thought to myself, "This is a place with a, with a leader with a vision like that. Mm. That's a place I want to live." Right. And from that, from that, and. The rest is history. The rest is history. As, as, it, as, it, as it were. Yeah. Um, oh, Property Monitor. Yes. Episode 14. Yeah. Uh, you spoke about bait and switch listings. Yes. And also junk leads. So right. tell us a little bit about uh, about how that, how so, that episode went. So it's interesting because I've been, I've been speaking to a lot of brokers recently and they're all complaining about junk leads. Oh, you know, we're spending, their companies are spending hundreds of thousands on campaigns, lead generation campaigns. But then when they get the lead, they call it, it's like, oh, it's a junk lead because yeah. it wasn't easy enough for them. So we had a little debate about what qualifies as a junk lead. Well, actually, not so much what qualifies as a junk lead, but what you can do with the junk lead. So you think, okay, they can't, they've given me a budget, 
they can't afford what I've got. But how about instead of just considering them a junk lead, use the data yeah. from Property Monitor to educate them, yeah. you know, to say, do you know that, okay, so your budget's 2.5 million. Do you know that the last time something was sold for 2.5 million in X area, it was 2016, you know, so use the data that we have available to have these intelligent conversations with buyers rather than ruling them off as, as, as junk leads. Yeah. I don't know what would be considered a genuine junk lead. What yeah. do, you, do you think there's such a thing as a proper junk lead that deserves to go in the trash? Uh, I actually don't. Mm -hmm. Most of my, not most, but a good percentage of the clients that I have, mm. um, I've been working with them for a long period of time. Yeah. So sometimes I've, 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 I mean, I've done, done deals recently, but it's been somebody we've been speaking to for over 12 months. Yeah. Um, so... I wouldn't say that it's a junk lead. I might say it may not be an effective lead for right for now. now. Yeah, for right it, now, for yeah. today. Mm. Um, but if you do look after the person, if mm -hmm. you do look after the client, then invariably what you'll find is that mm. the loyalty that they have to you after that period of time, yeah. you've got a head start. If you've yeah. got, you know, six, eight month lead time working yeah, with someone, it's true. the chance of them leaving you later mm. on when it comes to the point of closing the deal and mm. going with a different broker or different agent is significantly less. Right. So there is a, there, yeah. I, I, I see that as a, as a huge benefit. And, and there's like so many different translations of junk lead. Like in the UK, we call it time waster. A or waste. Kicker. A waste. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. tie kicker. Yeah. What other names are there for, yeah, just time, time waster or waste lead. Yeah. So when, when my colleagues used to call someone a waste lead, it typically was only based on the fact that they couldn't make a decision today. Correct. They wanted to buy in three months time. Yeah. Now, now he's a waste. Yeah. And funnily enough, I got, I kid you not, I was, you know, you know, I was looking for, a, I moved out three months ago. Yeah. I switched from one rental to another rental three months ago. So four months ago, I'd started my search. property search. And there's an agent who I, um, I reached out through the portal inquiring about a listing. I kid you not, he cool. only contacted me last week. Oh, no way. And I was like, darling. I'm already three D was in. Well, like, he contacted you three months. He, he was like, yeah, you sent an inquiry. And I'm like, on what property? And he was like, and I was like, that's three months ago. Yeah. I've already moved into a place. Yeah. Like you guys are slow. Like, so maybe at the time, I don't know, he was busy with big sales deals, but to contact me after three months, no, no, that's, that's not good. Yeah. But also something else learning from that is the agents that I contacted four or five months ago. Yeah. If they didn't have anything for me at that time, they didn't stay in contact with me. Yeah. And then I started getting desperate towards end of September. Yeah. And I go from being maybe a junk lead to a really hot lead because yeah. I have to make a decision within the next week or so. Yes. So, so yeah. yeah, sometimes it's just about timing, but I don't think there's any reason to, I would only put someone as a proper junk lead if they were discriminatory in any way. That's it, yeah. you know, but- yeah. Everybody has a need. Everybody has some kind of budget. Something can be done with everyone. Yeah. There's been a meme going around. Uh, we're talking about um, somebody that was looking for uh, a, a property to, to go and view a really, really high value property. Mm. And I think the agent messaged back and said something like, you know, because it's a high value property, you know, are you able to show proof? Can you send across proof, proof of, of funds? funds. Okay. Uh, mm. do you know, just so we know that you're able to actually afford it. And the mm. guy replied back and said, uh, I, I can't send proof of funds. I can't actually afford it. I just was um, aspirationally oh, wanted to look him. to see in okay. the future. Yeah. I wanted to make my, my, my dream become a reality. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's so, so cute. So, so but yeah, that's a time waster. <laughs> that, that potentially could be a time waster, mm. but yeah, sometimes you've got to kind of work through. And actually how yeah. off market listing came about was because of a time waster, wasn't it? That's exactly how yeah. off market listing came about because uh, I was at a friend's house as I spoke to, mentioned before uh, he was really, really upset the neighbours came round looked yeah. around and they were literally just looking wanting to furniture to, yeah and, interior and for the design build, and for the builders as well to mm. know exactly how he'd done it his property yeah. so they could do their property exactly yeah. the same so, so we you cater do, you do have like a nosy or a just an inquisitive lead yeah. but maybe one day yeah. they're going to become but let's put a different spin on that mm. What I find interesting for myself, I actually enjoy uh, showing properties. I yeah. actually enjoy meeting people. I think it's a relationship business as mm -hmm. much of it as it is a property business. Mm -hmm. You build up those kind of relationships. So invariably, if, for example, somebody, you know, they, they are coming just a window shop, yeah. for example. But if you do take them around, mm -hmm. if you do respect them, if you do show them uh, mm -hmm. a good experience, mm -hmm. 
sometimes what's happened is you do get referrals. Yes. Because when some one of their friends that may well be looking, yeah. I said, you know what? I met an agent that was really, really, really good, good the other day. Yeah. Speak to this guy. Mm. So I would then f- fight back on you and yeah. say, there is no such thing as a junk lead because if you do yeah. treat everybody- As um, a potential. As a potential. Or their network as a potential. As their net, their, yeah. and, their, and everybody's got a network. So yeah. the answer is, there is no such thing as, as official a as a junk lead. <laughs> We're calling it here first. We're calling it here <laughs> first. There's no such thing as a junk lead. Um, <laughs> after uh, Property Monitor, yeah. uh, which was episode 14, I believe we had episode 15, which was the yes. social media. Yes. There was something I found a little bit controversial What was in that, that? Go on. 10 stories a day, per day minimum, minimum. Minimum. That felt, that feels like a lot of work. It is. What, what were your much. thoughts on that episode? Well, I thought, okay, if a real estate agent is expected to post 10 stories a day, then really, when are they going to real estate agent, you know? Yeah. But it's possible if they start doing all of that, you know, here's what I had for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Uh, I'm, you know, get ready with me or here I'm going to whatever. One thing that I, oh, one thing that I can't stand, I really cringe and like stiffen up when I see agents driving and, and recording yeah, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's yeah. so dangerous, it's so please. Dangerous. And if I could just save one life yeah. by encouraging agents not to uh, post and drive, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not drinking and driving, yeah. posting and driving, please, please be careful. It's so not dangerous. A, listen, not only agents, across the board, yeah, no, everybody, everybody yeah. shouldn't use their phone. Yeah. Many I've seen many times that they're recording a video and yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if it's on a on a stand or if they're holding Even it if it hand. is, they're yeah. looking at the camera That's so they're not, true. or they're thinking about it's a distraction. Yeah. And the other one is, you know, when it rains in Dubai, like, you know, twice a year. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> they can't help but drive along yeah, and, and the film rain. the rain. It's like, yeah, we can look outside the window and we can see the rain, like no need. Oh, yes. But yeah. So apart from that, little warning, um, 10 stories a day. It's Minimum. A bit, it's a bit excessive. Yeah. But it can be done. There are people that are doing it. If it includes reposting and, um, you know, sharing news articles or follow. But I think the point they're trying to make is, and they are experts in yeah. social media management and what you need to do to kind of beat the algorithm and or hack the algorithm and improve your engagement is people want to see the life behind. They don't just want to see properties. Which is why I believe one of the things that was mentioned in that episode was mm. the fact about whether you should have a separate yes. um, a business profile mm-hmm. or to a personal profile. Yeah. And everybody said, no, no. <laughs> use the same one. People want to yeah. see what you're doing. They want to understand. Absolutely. And they, you know, they want to, they want to kind of get a, get yeah. a feel for, for, for you. Yeah, I'm guilty with off market listing Dubai. I've no, having separate but it's ones. different. It's different. Yeah. So I, I've, I've got a separate one. You've got a separate one, yeah. but that's because we have separate brands. Yeah. So you've got the brand of Ainsley yeah. and you've got a company called Off Market Listing Dubai, which has its own brand personality. Right. Right. You're not the same people. Yeah. Um, same with me. Propology has a separate account and Sylvia has a separate account. Propology is me, yeah, yeah. but it is a separate brand. Yeah. One day that's going to be managed by a social media marketing team right. with its own brand values, brand language and everything else. So me, yes, I have a, you know, I have a personal brand, but in that instance, it's okay to keep it separate. Now, if I'm a real estate agent, it's only me and the agency brand that I work with. So the agency brand have got their own social media operations going on. You then just have to represent everything you do, your personal, your work in your profile. So I think for real estate agents in particular, as entrepreneurs, you should just keep it as one profile. It's hard work operating it is, too. It is hard work. So one of the things that I've noticed is, what, and one of the reasons, you know, I use social media for the off-market listings, uh, is when I post uh, a story, mm. even if it's not necessarily property related, mm. people will then reach out to me yeah, because for something you're else. It kind of like triggers. Top of mind. Yeah, yeah, it keeps top of mind. So yeah. that's kind of one of the areas where I would yeah. say that by posting regularly, and I'd also say that social media in real mm. estate now, mm. it's, it's, a, it's a must have. Yeah. Uh, you have it's you, got you have to be to. your little sidekick lead generator and you know what else is a hidden i'll give you this one for free whatsapp status updates That's you have no um, idea yeah. i have some idea <laughs> I've, I've i've been whenever i'm desperately looking for a property for one mm. of uh, one of our investors yeah 
pop it on the WhatsApp status yeah. and there's the number of people that come back on. I don't know if it's because it's more personalized and it goes out directly or, but that, you know, that, it's been really, really effective. There's a different breed of people I find watching yeah. WhatsApp status updates and it tends to be the ones that don't, don't actually use social media at all. That's very true. So the people that view my WhatsApp status updates are not following me on Instagram yeah. and not following me on um uh, you know, we're not connected on LinkedIn. Yeah. They're just, uh, it's like WhatsApp is their only social media. Yeah. So it's a big group untapped over there. Yeah. So I would use um, status updates and just repurpose whatever you're posting on. Um, on your Instagram. On your Instagram, just repurpose just put, it, put it, it too. On yeah. 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 So it's, it, it's an invaluable tool, social yeah. media nowadays. Uh, and I think, um, I think if you're not using it, mm. you're missing out. Yeah. Uh, especially if it's in the real estate yeah. market. And you, ha and the hook, we spoke about the hook. Yes. <laughs> so you, ha your most viral reel. Yes. Had a fantastic hook. I flew to Maldives to sell a villa in Dubai. That's huge. <laughs> so it's like, I feel like, what is this story he's about to tell? Click. That's yeah. a hook, yeah. you know? So, yeah. I mean not many people will be able to tell that story and you can hear that story on season one episode one um how literally you went to quite, quite literally <laughs> yeah. viewed a property mm. um the owner said i want this completely off market no pictures no videos but find a way can yeah. you make it happen so i, <laughs> I jumped out of the airplane and built the parachute on the way down uh on that one yeah and it, a lot of similarities to the maldives yeah so yeah went over there recorded it and sold the property so that that's, there you go. that's definitely uh Thinking outside of the box. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you so, have a fantastic hook. I think the overarching theme, Sylvia, mm -hmm. uh, in season two, yes. Golden Nuggets. Let's have it. Is really being about, you know, being able to listen, the art of listening. Mm -hmm. That's something that's really, really important. Yeah. Uh, what's your thoughts on uh, on agents, <laughs> two ears, one mouth, I believe is the way you, uh, you that's so right, eloquently yeah. phrased it. <laughs> two ears, one mouth. It is really hard, and I'm guilty of it too, is listening. because Even, and you were my first guest on I the was. podcast. The, my best podcast ever. <laughs> when it was the first. It was the first one. But what I did then, and which is what agents do now, or some agents do now, is I was, list, I was hearing your answers, but I was concentrating on the next question. Yeah rather than listening, yeah. which could have taken me down a different path. You yeah. know, I had my set of questions and this is exactly what happens. I had my set of questions. I had my idea for the episode and that's all I was focused on. Yeah. It was a good episode. Don't Are you get saying me wrong. you weren't listening to my answers? <laughs> oh, well, I listened to your answers when I watched the edit, okay. but at the time I wasn't. Yeah. Now, had we had the episode now that I'm like 15 episodes in, yeah. I, I'm more confident hosting. So I'm more confident to just listen and let the conversation flow where it flows. Yeah. And that's why real estate agents, again, they're, sometimes they're so focused on their goal, which yeah. is I'm going to sell something to this buyer or tenant and we're just going in my direction. Yeah. Instead of listening to see where that could take you. I have to be completely honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I, 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 I do as a standard is listen to the client. And it's, it, I think it's maybe from my, you know, tech and sales background, uh, because if you listen to them, they'll tell you exactly how to, 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 to close them and how yeah. to, to, to bring them in, get them exactly what they're looking for. Mm. So I, yeah, I think that, that if um, listening is the, is the art of closing yeah. uh, and that's been able to. It really is very hard to do, but try it. Yeah, sometimes. no, no, it's important. It's important. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fudiciary duty. Yes. Let's talk about that. That was Jean episode 14. And that was the obligation of agents to not direct buyers, tenants to wherever they're going to have the most financial gain. Yes. Personally, as an agent. Yes. You've got to do what's right for your client, not what's right for your pocket. So if there's if there's two off plan developments, for example, exactly, and one's one, paying three percent, one's paying seven percent. Yeah, don't just show show both. Yes. Don't exclude the three percent because you just want the seven percent commission. Yes. yes. So that's a if you do that, that's a breach of your fiduciary obligation. I also think, I mean, of course, we already spoke. There's two different types of agents, right? Mm. There's career agents and mm -hmm. there's kind of the fast fast money yeah. agents. Um, but I also think that 
that by focusing on what the client actually wants, mm. long term, if you're a career agent, definitely, you know, reaps dividends yeah. uh, for you because the client will appreciate it. They'll yeah. come back to you again. And refer. And refer other yeah. people. It's all about referrals yeah. and being able to being able to drive. And uh, we spoke about this. I can't remember which episode, but where it's like uh, your ultimate goal as a real estate agent is really to just end up with five to ten consistent buyers yeah. or networks yeah. that constantly refer you. And that's it. That's the end goal yeah. for any real estate. And if you look at any of the top agents right now, they're working with a small group Correct. of consistent, regular buyers, right. and that's it. That, know? I, mean, I know, I know one guy that's he's got four, four clients. That's, that's it. it. Works mm-hmm. with them, looks after them, and it doesn't need to go anywhere else yeah. to get anything else. Don't need so, to advertise. Don't need yeah, to do anything. Don't need to do anything. Just, yeah, probably yeah. doesn't even need to do any social media, does he? Yeah, <laughs> but social media is still important, <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah. because if they've got a property that they want to market and they want to sell. Then there's the traditional platforms, yeah. but there's also the off-market way of being able yeah. to do it as well. But yeah. then, and we spoke about that, the responsibility of the platforms, and you'll know because you've got background at Property Finder. Yeah. Wh- whether it's the whose responsibility is it to police listings? Yeah. So it's like you've got so many of these fake listings or expired listings. And I touched on it with um, with Jean. Like, is it the obligation of the property portals or is it the agents? Yeah. What, what do you think? I think it's a combination of both. Mm. I mean, I think the property portals, um, they do as much as they can. Or mm. maybe they can also do a little bit more. Yeah. But they can't do everything. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's down to um, the, the the property owners. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, sorry, the, the, the property, the business owners yeah. uh, the, um, um, and the brokerages to also do as do much that, as they can yeah. in order to try and, you know, minimize mm. that as well. Because it's just frustrating. And Very. I don't know, I think because of my tech background, consumer experience mm. uh, is, is paramount. Yeah. So when, you know, we're developing and we're building an app mm. and we're doing something like that, it's, all that matters is, is consumer experience. Yeah. I remember back at the Property Finder days, you know, and this was in the very, very early days, we'd sometimes we were going to have a, a new launch for a new um, product on the app. Mm. We'd give it to our mums and say, you know, <laughs> how easy is it? Yeah, and, yeah. and record them mm. as they're actually going through the phone. Mm. You know, find this property. Yeah. And some of the things that are intuitive and we think, oh, that, you know, everyone would go there. Yeah. They're like, I can't find that button. Yes. And then, you know. Because you're so blinded correct. by your. And you're yeah. seeing it every day and that mm. kind of thing. So I think by, by listening and, and, and watching it and being able to kind of really yeah. understand um, what your clients are looking yeah. for makes a huge, huge difference. Well, it's the thing. I mean, the property portals, their clients are the brokerages. Yes. So they want to provide them a service, but they also don't want to make their lives difficult in any way. And I, I would love to see the property portals. I mean, look, they do have the option of reporting a listing yeah. if it turns out to be fake or no longer available or listed at the wrong price or wrong description but that's an anonymous kind of reporting yeah i am an avid user of insta shop yes right and whenever i order something on insta shop uh groceries or from the pharmacy it gives me the option to rate the supermarket on speed and accuracy yeah and if they've ever got something out of stock that was showing as on in stock yeah. on the app and it's not, I always mark them down for accuracy. Yeah. So if the portals came together and started marking agents or agencies down yeah. for inaccuracy, yeah. that would be, um, that yeah. would be a, a game changer. I believe they do have something when you, when you, when you finish, uh, like if, you, if you make a call, one of yeah. the most frustrating ones, I think that everybody, when the list is, is, no, no, longer available. Yeah, list is no longer available, <laughs> yeah. right? So uh, they do have something with the, you, that you're able then to kind of mm. mark down yeah. uh, regarding that. So those kind of, uh, the algorithm will push those agents. Oh, really? That, okay. that continually yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, well, some of the portals do that. Yeah. We'll continue to push those, those, um, those agents further down. Mm. Okay. So that when you're looking, the, the, you right. know. So it affects the algorithm, but if it was, imagine now if it was a public, display of oh this agent has a 30 percent rating on accuracy yeah it's gonna you know it's gonna affect their pockets so they're gonna make sure that they're using you know they're only listing properties that are available at the right price with the right description and the right photos so on that we agree i'd love to see that (laughs) yeah i think uh, i think they are working hard to do as much as they can is there anything we disagree on no but i'm not i'm not i'm not you're not the arguing type yeah i'm not not only the arguing type um i'm not uh, here to you know you know, promote or, or to, to kind of yeah. work with, uh, with, uh, with the with with the portals. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's kind of a, it's a collaborative. Yeah, uh, that needs to work on both sides. Uh, Chat GBT. Yeah, that was also uh, that also was something episode that's, one that's playing more of more of a, of mm-hmm. a role. Episode uh, eight, no, episode nine. 
Override. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sorry, I'm not the marketing guy. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. He wasn't interested. That tickles I guess. us. Yeah. <laughs> that tickles us. But yeah, yeah. So chat GPT, I use it. Do you yeah. use it? I do use it. I think it's going to become uh, play a more integral role in, mm. in, in all businesses across the board, not just in real estate. Yeah. Uh, and I think um, I think it's valuable. Um, we have a guy in the office who's dyslexic. Mm -hmm. uh, and he uses it a lot to be able to write the listings up and yeah. to go through and you know you can't use it as a one-stop shop mm. you have to be prepared to be able to put your own flavor to it as with everything yeah. uh but it's definitely going to play a, a greater mm. role not just in in in, in, in simply writing listings mm. but also i think it's actually going to be able to help buyers in the future and to put buyers and properties Property and, marry, and match them all together and that's mm. going to be something that's going to be very very exciting maybe that's what Eamon's scoop was. And he didn't want to tell he, he definitely didn't want, didn't want to tell us, us though, did he? No, he weren't having none of it. <laughs> he definitely didn't want to tell oh, us. Yeah. Um okay. Um short-term rentals, I yes. believe. Was that Waleed from That Keeper? was Waleed. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the episode with Waleed. He that was, was that your favorite? That was definitely, I think that was definitely my favorite. Waleed, okay. he was he was he was really articulate. Yeah. Uh, he was switched on. Uh he knew his numbers. Yeah. I don't I didn't agree with him completely in regards with the short-term rentals. Let's have it out um, because because I've been fighting this battle for yeah. a long time about the difference between the net net. Net net. Short term? Short term versus long term versus rental. Long term. He, when you Yeah. <laughs> when you calculate all the expenses involved, it ends up being same, same at the end of the year. So here is where I would disagree. Mm. Um apples to apples, yeah. I think he's on the money. Mm -hmm. But I think not all short term rentals are equal. Mm -hmm. so explain yeah okay <laughs> tell me more tell me more so so one of the things that we specialize we have a short-term rental business as well mm -hmm. uh is with the corporate rentals mm -hmm. that's the c-suite level executives companies are relocating them to the uae to yeah. dubai uh they're looking for somewhere to stay yeah. traditionally they may well have stayed in hotels but as they're looking yeah. for property uh, they'd true. rather live in a, an actual home yeah. and, and get, get a feel for the different areas. Mm. They, with us, they, they have to book for a minimum of one month. Yeah. And it takes a month at least to sort Typically, out the Typically, they always stay two yeah. or three months. Mm. The company is paying for it. Mm -hmm. So they pay a premium uh, for that. In addition to that, mm. the property is extraordinarily well looked after. Touch, but you know, you know why? Touch wood. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, like, that would be the ideal short-term guest because... They're going to treat that property That's exactly what a happens. bit like their boss's property. Correct. You know, they, they've, they've just started a new role. Um, they're, you know, they want to make a good first impression. Correct. You can't be hearing complaints Correct. from the property management 100%. about this person. Yeah. Not like the holiday homes guests. Correct. Or short the typical term. four or five yeah. days, the guys that have come yeah. over for a holiday, yeah, bachelor yeah, party, yeah. whatever it may well be. <laughs> those properties get treated very Trashed. differently. Yeah. Uh, and also you get the downtime because, you know, they're only mm. they're not here for the full week or whatever. Yeah. So that's where I would say that there are True. there are there are differences in terms mm. of the business model. So yeah. that's yeah, we specialize in the corporates. Mm. Um, and we've even had occasions where things have been broken mm. uh, and where the, the, the tenant has come to us and said, we'd like to pay for this directly. Wow. As opposed to you billing us through the company. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Well, that would never happen on a holiday. Home. So, <laughs> so maybe that's it. We need we need the data on this, though. Where yeah. are we going to get the data on this from? <laughs> because. Apples to apples, like you said, short term, like short, short term yeah. and long term, maybe they're close. But corporate lets yeah. is an, is comparing apples and apples to, that's, that's a pair, that's yeah, a that's pair. A pair. Yeah. And you know, the other thing with that guest yeah. is um, why also short term typically is um, not as profitable is because and I'm guilty of this. When I was in an apartment yeah. that was serviced and all bills included. <laughs> you left you left the lights on, you left the air conditioning running. Everything. You even, did the when whole lot, was, didn't you? even when I was on holiday. I know yeah. that's really bad. Yeah. And I hope Dr. And it's not very sustainable as <laughs> I was well, just right? Say, I hope that's, Dr. Waters is yeah. watching this. But yeah, when you're not paying for the bills, yeah. you will leave the AC on in every room. Yeah and the lights on and i did used to leave the kitchen lights on and the corridor lights on all the time yeah because i wasn't paying for it yeah okay i didn't leave the taps running or anything not to that extreme yeah that would be really extreme. <laughs> yeah. but yeah so there, there'll, there'll be a bit more conscious uh consumption yes yeah when it's a, a corporate guest and the other thing is you probably don't have the um the issue of summertime bookings like Holiday homes just drops off a cliff Correct. during the summer because yeah. it's too hot. Also, no the, also, the, also the, the the rental yields drop off a cliff yeah. as well during yeah. the summer, right? 
So, but with these corporate tenants, a lot of them are relocating around right, because August, of schools, September. Because they've got kids, yeah. correct. And they're yeah. relocating over. So yeah, that would be an interesting comparison yeah. to kind of have a look. But for us, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a strong business. But I guess why everybody doesn't do it, it's not the easiest Because you've got to have the relationships You need to have the relationships in order to get yeah. hold of the corporates, yeah. right? So yeah, so that makes mm. a big difference as well. Do you get well. big gaps in between bookings? <laughs> Typically, mm. you don't get big, 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 mm. big gaps. Um, it's typically back to back. They they book for one month. Uh, they extend for two. Mm. Typically, they stay three. They're waiting yeah. for their visas to be done. Yeah. Done looking for areas. Yeah. To, uh, and then they take their sweet time correct. searching correct. for a new property. Correct. Yeah, yeah. correct. So mm. and so that what that what that means is we only typically have to find four, four or five a a, yeah. a, a tenants a year. Winning. So you're not. Mm. The, you know, it's not you're not having to be as aggressive as well yeah. on, on, on on the marketing yeah. and that kind of thing. So in that case, we'd like to see the numbers at the end of the year and then make a draw a fair comparison yeah. between apples, apples and pears. No problem <laughs> at all. No problem at all. We'll need to get uh, we'll lead back we'll in. We'll get him back in. Exactly. Yeah. Then he can take us through that and we can uh, we can go through that. Um, OK, what have I missed for the tell all topics? Oof. Season two what golden else? nuggets. <laughs> what have we not covered? Was there anything else that jumped out at you and you thought, really, it was a golden nugget? A golden nugget. What were the golden nuggets? Tell us about niching down. So Jean said this in episode 14, where all agents have to find their niche. And oh. that niche doesn't have to be a community or a building. It could be a nationality. It could be a price bracket. Yeah. It could be a genre like luxury or mid-range or, you know, affordable. Um you know, now on the sustainability theme, maybe there's space in the market for someone to be, to niche down on sustainable buildings or sustainable communities. Yeah. So yeah, finding your niche. I think it's really interesting. So this is, uh, let me be a little bit controversial uh, for you. Here here comes some (laughs) um, controversy. controversy. Um, So niching down is important. Knowing your local area, Mm. really, really important. But there are occasions when mm. you have a particular investor, a particular client. And you have to go outside. And you have to go outside mm. your areas. Now, I know traditionally, you know, different companies, well, yeah, you pass it over, you yeah. refer it to somebody else within the business. Mm. Um, but there is something going back to kind of what I spoke on before is that personal relationship. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a client does like to, when they find a good agent, like, there's an agent, um, Liam uh, White & Co. Mm-hmm. Fantastic agent, mm. really, really good guy. And, you know, so I'm, that, I'm happy to kind of, you know, men- men- mention him. Um, conscientious, does the work, works really, really well. Mm. When you find an agent that you really, really enjoy working with, sometimes you don't want to, you know, go and to, you know, work with a different, because Mm. it's it's about trust as well at the end of the day, I think. So if you trust somebody, you'd like to work with them. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, it can, you know, you want to have an area specialist. Mm -hmm. I know in the UK as well, that, you know, that's how many of the different um, agencies work in terms of the local one on the high Mm -hmm. street traditionally. Um, So that's an area that I Mm -hmm. think, could be controversial yeah. in terms of wanting to stay with your client the whole time. Yeah, to look but you them. can, like, but you don't have to have the listing. So you know, like, let's say, what, what area does Liam cover? Um, well, uh, JBR. Okay. So you know, when I've got a JBR or Marina client, I'm going to go to Liam. You yeah. can still be part of that process with your client, yeah. but let them know that you've got a network of agents that trust you, work with you, you trust them, yeah. and add more chefs to the kitchen i believe you're talking about agents adding more value <laughs> that's right that's my overarching theme for the <laughs> for the season is adding value how agents can be adding more value yeah mm. yeah i think that's important as well so you know you you okay you don't you you're not focused off market listing isn't focused on a particular area but you have a niche yeah. your niche is discreet right. buyers discreet sellers yeah that's it yeah. you know you might you, I doubt you're going to get a discreet studio seller in, I don't know. International city or <laughs> something. Something like that. Yeah, That's yeah. probably, you know. Yeah. And when you have a niche, people kind of, I don't know. Not that they, you, they gravitate towards it, right? They gravitate towards if it. If that's what exactly. they're looking for and yeah. it fits that, then they kind of gravitate yeah. towards that. And yeah. yeah. And traditionally, the areas that we work in are yeah. particular areas where yeah. people would prefer. And I did, like, after we did filmed um, episode one, um, I had so many people like, I want to work with Ainsley. I want to work with Ainsley, like uh, clients, potential clients. And you spoke very little about actually what you're selling or what, it was just your vibe. They wanted to work with that, right? You know, they were like, this sounds like, this sounds like a trustworthy guy. I want to work with him, you know? So 
Um, people by people, but it was, yeah. it's likewise as well. I like working with nice people as yeah. well. Uh, so that, I think that's yeah. something that's always important, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, what else? Did we miss anything else? The next season next is going to be your, All I don't right. know how I should put it. Is it the leader's season? The is leader's it the CEO CEO's season? A mixture of all the above. So now season two, dead to us. It's dead to us. <laughs> <laughs> season one. Yeah. It's twist. finished, over. <laughs> over. It's gone. <laughs> Season three, we're going off site, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm seeing some really nice locations uh, coming up now. Yeah? We've got some interesting locations. Um, we're not interesting gonna... guests as well, I imagine. Interesting guests in, sh- in their environment. So okay. it's going to be like Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> A mixture of lifestyles of rich and famous, Dubai bling, and selling sunset. Ooh, all okay. an amalgamation, all, yeah. all rolled together. Yeah. So I'm going to be speaking to the leaders in the real estate industry in Dubai to get into under their skin, right. find out how they, what their journey was. What makes like, them tick? What makes them tick? And how they've done what they've done? How they've done what they've done? What their routine? You know, let's find out if there's that 4 a.m. club or whatever. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of learning. Those guys, some of those guys yeah. are phenomenal. I used to work for one of them. Who was that? So when I very first came to Dubai and I was involved in real estate, mm. uh, I was working for a company in JLT called Dynasty Zaruni. Dynasty Zaruni. Dynasty Zaruni. Mm-hmm. They were very, very popular mm. back in back in the day. Mm. Uh, and I remember uh, I was on the phone. I was brand new to Dubai. Mm-hmm. I was on the phone, I was whispering, uh, trying to call the bank mm-hmm. uh, to get them to open a bank account so my salary could, could, get, could get put in. There's a small basic uh, back in those mm. days. Um, and I was on the phone uh, and I was whispering away and I was begging the bank to come down and they weren't listening to me and they weren't, they weren't getting involved and they, they weren't really that interested in. Mm. As I was there, I could feel somebody stood behind me. Mm. That person took the phone off me. He spoke into the phone. He finished speaking to the phone, gave the phone back to me yeah. and said, I think that should have it sorted now, Ainsley. Yeah. And he walked away. And that person was Kabir Merchandani. Okay. Um, and now with his you know, five holdings yeah. and all of the five properties. Uh, but that was the, back in the early, early days. And uh, that afternoon, three people from the bank yeah. were down in the office helping me sort out my little bank account. What did he say to, to them? Safe. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you'll, you'll have to get him on the show to tell you what he, what he actually said to them. But, uh, but whatever he said, yeah. it was extremely effective. Effective. Uh, and he looked after his employee then and I'm sure he looks after that's his employees it. now. Yeah. So, and that's another thing we'll talk about, like how do you kind of develop your people and they've got, you know, he, that's, that's a powerful call. It was a, right. It was a powerful <laughs> so call. we want and he was looking out for you, and you were just one month in. I was brand new. Right? I was so, brand new, one month in, yeah. and he didn't have to do that at all. Yeah. You know, came behind, saw I was having a problem, uh, fixed it, mm. and then walked away. I don't even think I spoke to him before at that point. <laughs> so that was uh, that yeah. was an interesting one. So I think the next episode is going to be really uh, interesting to hear little tidbits, exactly little, little stories, stories like little that. stories yeah. like that about what some of these CEOs yeah. have gone through yeah. uh, and how they've done it. Because yeah. I'm sure that they've got lots of employees now yeah. that would love to, to learn yeah. the secret sauce. The secret sauce, but that's the thing. Like, there's a lot of um, you know I've identified a gap in the market. So there's a lot of these agency owners or real estate leaders, they're out there. They're very vocal on social media. They're very vocal. They've got their, some of them have got their own podcasts, yeah. but they're talking to a different audience. They're right. talking to buyers, sellers, you know, the industry. I want to, it's kind of like, do you remember This Is Your Life? Yes. With, um, <laughs> yes. I can't remember what his name was, but yeah. So I want to get into them, their personality, their, their journey. And there's going to be some super goldy golden nuggets okay. out of that. Okay. so we're going to call them the goldiest golden nuggets okay. the goldiest goldies. golden nuggets yeah. so that's what's coming up in season three no, and maybe we'll good. get kabir on hey you never know you never know i think yeah. it'd be interesting maybe he could do an interview on his uh on his on his jet that could be interesting say less <laughs> say less <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. I can't bring these guys into the studio. Yeah. Sorry, no offense, studio, but yeah. I'm gonna take you to their favorite place. So Let, you want to see how they operate in the wild? In the in their in their wild, yes, like David Attenborough. <laughs> In their natural in habitat. In natural habitat. In their natural Here habitat. we you have. Know, some, of the sea, some of these CEOs, you never know, maybe I think you know, some of them may have a yacht. We're going to expect yachts. Y- yachts, private jets. It's gonna, it's, listen, no, no, no matter Heli what, it's going to make great watching. 
maybe on a you know on the golf course wherever yeah. their natural habitat is where it is yeah. we're coming to you okay. so yeah no more studio setup um coming soon the goldiest golden, <laughs> the nuggets, goldiest golden nuggets from the leaders of the dubai real estate industry <laughs> that's what's coming up in season three <laughs> don't <Steve>. miss this <laughs> and um if you'd like to be a part of it reach out to my people no i'm joking get my people speak to your people <laughs> yeah i'm sure it'll be great so yeah Good. Well, listen, thank you so much for keeping your pinky promise. I, I kept my pinky promise. And you come back at the end of season. Oh, no way. Here's another pinky promise. Season three. Season three. Tell all. Honestly, yeah. I get to come back again. <laughs> we'll do the tell all. Okay. Oh, gosh, that's going to be a juicy tell all. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I'm looking forward to it already. We need to watch the views, though, on this one to yeah. see how I've done. I think <laughs> that she might, she might review. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if we do well, I'll be more than happy yeah. to come back again. Uh, we'll have a right old natter about all the um, all the CEOs and, and the all locations. the locations. Yes. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing the locations yeah. where where they take you, yeah. where you guys go, and some of the things you speak about. Well, also yeah. learning a little bit about these guys yeah. and what they've done because some of them being exceptionally they've got phenomenal stories. They've been exceptionally yeah. successful, uh, and it, to learn the story and to learn and get to know a little yeah. bit more about them, and because they're the, many of them, they're the face behind the brand as well, right? Exactly. So we're going to dig deep into that. Looking forward to I it. hope I make someone cry as well. Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? When you, <laughs> when you can get them to really start tearing up, and like they do all those uh, on the interviews. On the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's my mission. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But yeah. Thank you for hosting. Thank you for having me. I've absolutely enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure. My first hosted experience. Yeah. Well, so. there you go. You did really well. You're a great host. You're oh, a great interviewer. To be fair, you were a you were a great guest. Yes. It, on Not your own. On your own. On my own show. <laughs> on your own. Now, show. all you need to do is tell them to like, share, and subscribe. Okay. And all that. Go on. If you've enjoyed today, like, share, and subscribe. We're looking forward to seeing more fantastic content with golden nuggets yeah and even if you didn't enjoy today <laughs> still like share and subscribe please if you didn't like and enjoy still like share and subscribe to golden nuggets sylvia el darby podcast <laughs> signing out signing out <laughs> thank you that's a wrap <laughs>